Hey guys, welcome back to our channel, as you seen in the thumbnail, in this video we are gonna see. What if Naruto secretly married with Tamari, this is part 7, and if you want more then please leave a like, share and subscribe. Let's get in the video. I'm Skip. You're fucking crazy you know that. Tamari said. Yeah that's probably why I'm still alive to be honest. Naruto replied grinning as Tamari just rolled her eyes. I hate how true that statement is. She muttered as Naruto just laughed as he dusted himself off. Normal timeline. As the family was walking down the street they ran into Shikamaru. Naruto what's up Shikamaru? We need to talk. Now. Naruto nodded before turning to Tamari, take her as a home and stay there until I return. Actually I was hoping we could talk at your place. It's the most secure place I can think of. The Nara air countered. Alright, let's go. Naruto answered and led everyone back to the house. After they finally made it Naruto made a clone who took Urza outside to play, while the rest sat in the dining room. So what's going on? Naruto asked. First off, welcome back and you're a little early aren't you? Thanks and yes, we got reverse summoned a couple days ago and have been using them as rest days. Oh and before you ask we just adopted the little after finding her last night about to be raped. So what's going on? What's with the secrecy? I've been snooping around and been hearing some rumblings. Rumblings? Tamari asked. I heard Danzo paid you to a visit. Yeah it wasn't exactly pleasant. Naruto replied. What did he want? He wanted to make sure Tamari and I were fulfilling our duties to our homeland and making progress on procreating. Naruto answered rolling his eyes. That's it. Was there anything else? Yes the windbag wants to mentor our child when the time is right. Tamari stated, oh and I shot a firework in his face that knocked him on his ass. Naruto added. I see. Shikamaru said thinking like a normal Nara. What's going on Shikamaru, be straight with me. Naruto said. Children have been disappearing again. He answered. Disappearing? The hell does that mean? Tamari exclaimed. Wait, again? The hell does again mean? Naruto added. Apparently years ago when Orochimaru was still a part of the village he did experiments. Danzo supplied him with children and experiments were conducted. Mostly children who have no home and are found in the red light district. So kids like Urza and myself. Naruto said looking at the table as a bunch of thoughts were running wild. Yeah, kids like you too. That's kind of the problem though now that Urza is a thing in your life. You think Urza was going to be kidnapped and used in these experiments? Naruto asked. It's possible. I've noticed it's been regular people who take these kids away to some weird locations that go underground. So he has an underground facility lair where these experiments are being conducted. Do you know if he's the one conducting them or someone else? Naruto asked. Not sure, but seeing as you hate this guy's guts and he's taking innocent children away, along with thinking you're nothing more than a weapon I say we need to take care of this. Shikamaru said. You know for once you sound more like me. Naruto said smirking. Don't get comfortable with it Naruto. Wouldn't dream of it Shika. Naruto said getting up to find some sake. After finding the exact brand he wanted he came back with some saucers and offered everyone a drink. Should have gotten this out a few minutes ago, cause this calls for me getting a little hammered. The Yuzumaki stated taking back a shot. So what's the plan or next step or whatever? Tamari asked. Well Lady Tsuna Day has already been informed of this. She heard a rumor and assigned me to a covert recon mission. I gathered some info reported back to her after a couple days, and that brings us to now. So in regards to where we go from here, I need you on my team Naruto. Shikamaru said. What about me? Tamari asked. Absolutely not. Naruto interjected. Excuse me? Why not? She asked with an aggressive undertone. Naruto took another shot of sake before answering, because if anything happens I need you to be here for Urza, I can't risk worrying about Urza and your safety during the mission when everything happens. I need to know that you two are safe, right here in this house. He countered. Tamari sighed and turned away before answering, fine. Just make sure your ass comes back alive. What makes you think we're going in there Kune's flying? Naruto said. It's you, I wouldn't make that statement if I didn't know you. She replied and then took a shot. Fair point. Naruto conceded before turning to Shikamaru, so I assume you've already created your task force. Yeah, it's going to mostly just be us scouting so I need eyes, ears and a good nose. So Niji and Kiba, where the hell do I fit it in this? I also need a tank who can take a hit and dish it out as well if shit hits the fan. That's where you come in. I'm not a damn tank, I'm like a multi-use tool. You mean a Swiss army knife? Tamari asked. Don't know what that is but yes that. Well can you look through walls, see someone's chakra network and smell things from far away and track someone? Touché. Naruto said and Shikamaru took a celebratory shot. So when are you supposed to meet with Lady Tsunade? Tamari asked. 
I was going to see about doing it today, but seeing as how you guys have had a rough couple days we can save it for tomorrow. But because I haven't had one peaceful day since I stepped foot back home, so being able to take today off would be great. What do you mean? Shikamaru asked. Well after coming back home I had to deal with some tood from this one over here, then go through an evaluation test to see where I'm at, then rescue and revive Gara, came home and passed out, so I'm not counting my first day back from the mission as a relaxing day since we slept. Next morning was Danzo, followed by meeting Urza that evening, then this morning we adopted her, and now I'm dealing with this. So to be honest if I can get a whole day with zero drama and be a lazy bum that would be fantastic. Naruto said as he got up and stretched. Well that's pretty much everything I got, soon the day's got more information for us, but I'll let you get back to whatever it is you guys need to get to. Shikamaru said. Thanks. Tamari replied laughing a little. You two take care alright. He said as he left the Yuzumaki household. See ya Shika. Naruto yelled back from the dining room. After hearing the door close the two blondes sat in silence for a minute while looking outside to see Naruto's clone playing with Urza. So what's your next move? Tamari asked and for a little bit Naruto was silent. He was replaying everything Shikamaru just told him and trying to figure out exactly how he should go about the coming day. Honestly I'm not entirely sure. I do think I need to secure the house even more and have traps ready in case Danzo is expecting me to make a move on him and he tries to counter by attacking you too. I'll be in my father's study working on new seals and seeing what he's got in storage as well. He said getting up and starting to walk away, but Tamari grabbed his arm. Come here. Naruto came back and followed Tamari as she led him to the couch. She had him lay his head on her lap while she stroked his hair to try and get him to relax. Everything's going to be alright. Someone decided to mess with the wrong family and they're going to feel every ounce of Yuzumaki wrath. Be smart and be safe okay. You boys better have each other's back. You have a daughter and fiancé to come home to. We need to change that you know. Naruto replied. Change what? Fiancé to wife. Tamari stopped stroking his hair and looked down. Naruto turned to look up. I thought you wanted to wait until all of this was over and done with. She asked. Yeah, well we could just have a private ceremony. He suggested. This only made Tamari smile and lean down to kiss him. You sure you have to go into your father's study right now? She asked as she continued to kiss him and moved to his neck while her fingers ran through his hair. As much as I'd love to ravish you for the next few hours I can't. I need to get this done, but tonight I promise. He said kissing her real quick before separating and heading down into his father's study. Damari watched him go down into the basement before turning to go outside and watch her as a play fight against Naruto's clone. She couldn't help but smile at seeing how much livelier she's been and she already shows some fighting spirit in her. Sitting down on one of the chairs and just watching it happen, she began to daydream about a future where she's watching Naruto play with their children, while Urza is returning from a mission before they head inside to get ready for the family lunch. Ar and Kankram are visiting, and they have a nice family gathering with the house bustling. Damari was snapped out of her lovely daydream when she heard Urza calling out to her, Kachan. Huh? Tamari replied confused at first of who she was calling Kachan, and she remembered that technically she's a mother now. What's wrong Urza? Nothing I I was just wondering yes. Could could you teach me how to fight like you? You haven't seen me fight though. Naruto made sure to block your view did you get a glimpse? Tamari asked. Yes. She said dejected as she looked down at the ground feeling like she did something wrong. You didn't do anything wrong sweetheart. I just thought Naruto blocked enough of your view so it can't be helped. I'll have to talk it over with your dad but maybe I can show you a couple of the things that I can do, how about that? Tamari offered. Really you'd show me she asked bouncing up and down. Of course come over here to the desert your uncle made for me. Uncle? Urza asked. Oh I guess I haven't mentioned my family to you. I forgot all you know is that Naruto grew up without his parents but he did have Master Jiraiya there for him. Well how about before I show you what I can do I tell you about my side of the family. Yay. Well my father was the fourth Kazikage and married my mother who had beautiful purple eyes and I have two younger brothers. The middle one is your uncle Kankerm, and the youngest one is named Gara, and he recently became the fifth Kazikage, and he was formerly the Jinchuriki to the one-tailed beast, Shukaku. Kazikage? Urza asked with confusion evident. Well do you know about the five great nations? Tamari started. Urza shook her head, and Tamari began to explain everything to her. Well there are five great nations, and these are the biggest and strongest villages in the world. You have our home here, the Hidden Leaf in the Land of Fire. There's the hidden sand, where I'm from, in the land of wind. The hidden cloud is in the land of lightning, the hidden mist is in the land of water, and the hidden stone is in the land of earth. So each of the five great nations are located in a land that's based on one of the five main elements, fire, wind, lightning, water and earth. 
Each village has a leader with the rank of Kage. We have the Hokage, the sand has the Kazikage, the mist has the Mizukage, the cloud has the Raikage, and the stone has the Tsuchikage. My brother and father have both reached the highest point in Ninja Kan and earned the title of Kage, your dad is trying to do the same thing. So in order to be Hokage you have to be really strong? Urza asked. Yup, you have to pretty much be the strongest in your village to get to that level. Does that mean Uncle Gara is stronger than dad? Damari actually laughed at that because of the history of those two, and in the only head-to-head -head fight, Naruto came out the victor, even though he looked way worse than Gara. Naruto was still able to move, while Gara stayed immobile on the ground. Well not exactly, you see your father and uncle have already fought each other, and your dad won that fight. Really he's stronger than Akage. Well your uncle Gara wasn't Akage at the time, but he did win. Your father's pretty amazing if I'm gonna be honest. Is he the strongest here? Um, I'm not sure if he's the strongest, but he's definitely one of the strongest, definitely stronger than me, and most likely one of the five strongest in the village, he just doesn't show it off. Now every ninja has an element that they can control, and most people from my country use wind, and here they use fire. The mist mostly uses water, cloud has lightning, and stone uses earth the most. The combination of certain elements creates something called Keke Genkai. My father had one special to him called Gold Dust, where he could control gold-colored dust like it was sand just like your Uncle Gara can do. What about you and Tu Chan? I'm not actually sure about your father's, but I use wind. Tamari said smiling. So you can control the wind Durza asked with excitement. Haha, <laughs> not quite sweetheart. Only the greatest wind users can control the wind itself. However they do say that the second Hokage was so good at water style that he didn't need any water around him to use a water jutsu. Maybe one day I'll be able to control the wind itself without needing to weave signs. Tamari replied with a smile on her face. The rest of the day was spent with Tamari showing Urza a lot of the things she's learned in the six years she's been an official shinobi. What put a smile on her face was seeing just how excited and enthusiastic Urza was about everything that a ninja can do. Naruto had done some research and found some interesting seals his father came up with and some that his mother made. He decided to take a breather and let his brain relax from the stress that seals bring and came out back just in time to hear Tamari ask Urza, so you think you want to be a ninja like your Kachan and Tuchan? Yeah. I'm sure with some training from your awesome parents, you'll end up being stronger than the both of us. Naruto said hugging Tamari from behind and smiling down at Urza. You think so? She asked. I have no doubt. He beamed at her. Well hello there handsome. She smirked up at him and gave him a quick peck. You find what you need to. She whispered. Pretty sure, we'll see tomorrow after I meet with Bachan. We can talk more in bed. He whispered back and pecked her forehead and squeezed her just a little tighter and took in the scent of desert lilies in her hair, like it was the last time he'd get to smell that scent for a long time. For some reason that scent always gets him to calm down quickly and ease any anxiety he's experiencing. Let's go inside you too. Tamari said as she put an arm behind Naruto and took Urza by the hand and lead everyone inside. This night Tamari cooked dinner for everyone. While she was cooking Urza began asking Naruto as much as she could to learn about what he can do and see if he really is as strong as Tamari says. Naruto showed off the extent of his clone Jutsu and the Rasengan, the later of the two really caught her eyes with the bright blue color of the technique. Tamari giggled at the antics between the two and was happy to see how much of a change Urza has shown in such a short time. She quickly finished up dinner and the three ate with the blondes answering any questions Urza had for them that were both shinobi and non-shinobi questions. After answering all the questions she had they took her upstairs to her bedroom and tucked her in and stood at the doorway, just looking at how peaceful she was sleeping and wondering when the last time she slept this peaceful would have been. Come. Tamari said taking him by the hand and leading him to their bed. Sit. She said and he sat at the edge of the bed and looked up at her. What's going on? You were hiding how stressed you were. She said as she moved to sit on her shins behind him and began undressing him from the back. This mission has me concerned. What if Danzo is still supplying these abandoned kids to Orochimaru and he's helping to fund his research and whatever else that sick fuck does? Urza could have been one of those kids the other night and it kills me because when I think about it, I could have been one of them too. He said as she took off his shirt and began running her hands across his body, always loving the chance to feel him up. What do you mean? She asked. When Sasuke and I were attacked in the forest of death three years ago during the exams, he seemed to know what I am, and it almost seemed like he was as interested in me as much as he was in Sasuke. You know I was an orphan, if Danzo has really been doing this for as long as Shikamaru says, I could have been one of those kids and I wouldn't be here, you wouldn't be here in the leaf, and Urza would have also be taken or whatever those scumbags were going to do to her. 
he said clenching his fists and began stressing out again until Tamari hugged him as tight as she could and it surprised him just how strong she was. Obviously she's dedicated and takes her training seriously, but he didn't expect her to be that strong and slowly the anxiety began to fade. I'm sorry. He whispered. Don't apologize, none of that stuff matters because right now is what's happening, there's no reason to think about what could have been. Right now I'm here engaged to you, and together we saved Durza, and she now has a family. That's what we need to focus on, not the hypotheticals or what-ifs. You're right. Naruto said looking down. Tamari took her hands and cupped his face and raised him so he could look her in the eyes. He turned into her left and gently grabbed it with his right and laid a soft kiss in her palm. Thank you. Come on, time to get up. She said and led him back downstairs which confused the hell out of him. Where are we going, I thought we were gonna go to bed. We were, but I changed my mind and it's obvious you need to relax, so we're going to take advantage of the fact that we have our own little hot spring. So what's your master plan? I'm going to give you a nice massage until I feel that you've relaxed, then I'm going to fuck you, after that you're going to return the favor and fuck my brains out, and you can't stop until I'm begging you with everything for you to come inside me. She answered with a smirk, and soon the two were out back once more, and she gave him a little strip tease before walking in the warm relaxing water. Naruto followed suit and joined her in the water, and she could tell the warm water was already taking a little bit of the edge off. Come sit in front of me. She said and soon she was massaging him, and she was listening to his breathing and paid attention to where he was knotted up the most, and focused her attention on those spots, and after 15 minutes the muscles finally loosened up, and he was visibly much more relaxed. She began laying kisses on his back and neck while nibbling on his ears. Her hands were roaming over just the right spots and occasionally raking her nails across his skin to make sure he had goosebumps. Lemon alert. I think it's time to have some fun tonight, Watcha think? She asked as one hand snaked down to his lower waist and began softly palming his manhood. Just what I was thinking. He said as he leaned back and to the side and brought her down for a ferocious kiss that she quickly reciprocated. She moved to be in front of him and gestured for him to back up and sit on the edge. Seeing as he was only at half-mast she laid kisses from the head down to the base and back up. She looked up at him as she sucked the side of his cock and then she finally took the head in her mouth and began just playing with the head until he got completely hard and could hear him moan out loud. Deeper. He groaned with his head lolled back and his right hand resting on her head, getting ready to grab a fist full of her hair and shove his cock to the back of her throat. Damari listened to Naruto and began forcing as much of his cock down her throat because she knew what was about to happen. Regardless of if she shoved it all the way down her throat, he was still going to face fuck her until she coughed up enough spit for him to slide all the way inside her with no breaks. Honestly it was something that turned her on so it was a win-win for her. Naruto was about to begin face fucking her, but once she added her hands and began twisting her hands in opposite directions, he let go and arched his back while grabbing the edge of the spring and squeezed with so much pressure that he was cracking it. Holy shit Tamari. Don't stop, you better not stop you hear me you fucking whore. Tamari's only response was to speed up and keep coating his behemoth manhood with her spit. I'm so close. He said and hearing this she backed off and said, no, not yet. I want to try something new if you're open to it. I don't care as long as I can coom. He answered and she lifted his legs up the same way he does to her when he eats her out and she began taking his balls in her mouth and playing with them while the other hand continued to jerk him off. Is that what you wanted to do? He asked groaning some more. Not even close. Just wanted to make sure everything is nice and wet she said before spitting on his perineum and watching it drip over his asshole, where she lightly rubbed the spit around the surrounding area, and this really got his attention, what the fuck are you doing? Having fun, now trust me. You'll come harder than ever if you just relax and let me do what I need to do. Fine, just do whatever it is you're gonna do. With pleasure my love. She said and began licking his asshole and could feel him clench and release. It made her giggle a little knowing that this feeling was 100% foreign to him. After a minute of teasing the outside and began slowly pushing her tongue in. Fuck me. Naruto groaned and was surprised at how good it actually felt, as weird as it was to think about. Trust me I will, I just need to make you lose your mind when you come first. She thought and soon she was able to get her nose right to his sack and wiggled her tongue around and could hear him trying his best to hold back a moan, but he was slowly breaking. Damari coated her middle finger with her spit, and while she pulled out her tongue, she slowly and gently inserted her digit and began softly and slowly fingering his walls. At this point he was closer to breaking than before, and Tamari could feel it, and she knew all it was going to take was her pressing against his prostate, and he would blow his load like no other. That's exactly what she did. She rubbed the pad of her middle finger against his prostate while continuing to blow him, and after only 30 seconds he couldn't hold back. Fuck Tamari. I don't know what you did but I can't stop it. 
I'm gonna coom. He yelled grabbing her hair and forcing her to stare right there as he blew the biggest load ever. It was impossible for her to drink it all down and he just kept coming like a never-ending fountain. It wasn't until she pulled her finger out that he finally tapered off and she was able to drink him down and lick the excess off his waist and abdomen. She didn't even give him a chance to recover as she climbed up out of the water and slammed down on his length and put him in a vice grip as they held onto each other as if the world were ending. What what the hell was that? He asked. Just something I read about and heard from some women. Apparently men have their own version of the G-spot and it happens to be the prostate, so I wanted to try it out and see just how true it was. You exceeded my expectations and I honestly want to do it more if that's okay with you. She said worried that he didn't like it. That that was the best fucking orgasm I've ever had. You better keep doing that because it was the most amazing orgasm, I could feel it everywhere in my body and it was insanely intense. Glad you liked it, now sit back and enjoy your lovely fiancé fucking you. She said grabbing his wrists and pinning them above his head as she began to grind her hips back and forth. God damn it, you're so deep. She moaned. You love it. He retorted. Never said I didn't, it just amazes me how deep you're reaching. She replied as she began to bounce her ass on him and a reverberating clapping sound could be heard. If it weren't for the two lip locking their moans could be heard clearly from inside the house which would wake up Urza. Fuck, I'm gonna coom again now. Tamari moaned as she squeezed her eyes shut and tried her best to hold it off. Give it to me. Naruto whispered in her ear. No, not yet. I want to keep going. It's okay if you can't Tamari. Just tell me how much you're enjoying this and if you're gonna coom. Just let me chase this one orgasm and then I'm yours to do what you see fit. She moaned as she got closer to that sweet release. She kept up a fast pace bouncing on him and soon she was finally at that peak. Finally. I'm cooming Naru. She moaned and her whole body tensed up and began shaking as she came. Naruto took this time to grab her by the waist and mercilessly began pounding up into her guts. Tamari tried screaming out in pleasure, but no sound came out. All she could do was grip his hair and just accept the beating her insides were getting from her love. You cooming for me? Naruto asked without slowing down. Again. She squeaked out while nodding her again. You're cooming again he asked. Yes. Don't stop please. She whined. Never. He replied and she crashed her lips to his and whispered to him. Fuck me. Fuck me like you mean it. As you wish. Naruto replied and flipped them over and began pounding down into Tamari. I can't hold it Naru, I'm gonna scream if you keep fucking me this hard. I don't care what you have to do, you better hold back that scream understand me. Naruto replied. Yes. She squeaked. What was that? Yes daddy. She squealed and was forced to cover her mouth with both hands as another orgasm shot through her system and her legs closed around his back and kept him buried unable to move. Damari, I'm gonna coom if you don't let go. Damari only shook her head no unable to form words, the orgasm was still racking her body to the point where she began arching her back up and pulling her legs closer to herself. Naruto had mere seconds before blowing his load so he grabbed her feet and pried them apart and was surprised to see just how strong this orgasm was controlling her. I'm gonna coom where do you want it? Don't care I'm still cooming. She said and Naruto grabbed the back of her head and held it still while he jerked himself to completion and covered her entire face in coom. Naruto fell back on his ass breathing hard and was shocked to see Tamari still twitching from that orgasm. Hey you okay? He asked and soon the twitching stopped and she had the biggest smile on her face. That was incredible Naru. I never knew something like that was possible. She said before wiping the coom off her face and drinking it down. Fuck that was amazing she said. Oh yeah. I didn't know you could coom that much in such a short time Mary. It was amazing, just complete euphoria the whole time. I really wish we could just go ahead get married and have a baby. I want to feel you fill me up so bad Nero. I do too, but you know it isn't a safe for us to have a child just yet. Once we remove the Akatsuki the first thing I'm doing is giving you that child. He said kissing the top of her head. Lay back for me would ya? She asked and Naruto complied and watched as Tamari cleaned up his cock with her mouth, letting her tongue delicately trace him, as could taste the mixture of her coom and his. If she had to be honest it was her favorite flavor to taste. She finished by pulling her mouth off his head with a loud pop and gently struck him with a sly smile. Thanks Mary. Naruto said and noticed a smile. What? You think you can keep going? She asked still slowly and gently stroking him back to length. As long as we move this into the bedroom. He replied with a smile of his own. Anything new you want to try? He asked. A lot of things I want to try if you're up for it. I'm game, just lead the way. He said as they dried off and she led him up to their bedroom and let him apply the silencing seal and the two continued their romp for the next four hours. Lemon end. Next morning. 
The sun broke through their curtains, and Naruto was the first one to open his eyes and just smiled at Tamari sleeping peacefully. Tamari woke up a couple minutes later and grinned at the sight of her favorite smile. Good morning Naru. Morning Mary. He replied and they both kissed each other before Naruto pulled her in close, and they just sat in silence and enjoyed taking in each other's scent and presence. You were amazing last night. Naruto said. You did all the hard work. It was like you were an animal last night. Never knew you had it in you Naru. She said looking up at him with a smile. Well I've got a great partner who tells me what they like and don't like, so thank you. He replied kissing her forehead. After a couple of minutes Tamari wriggled her way out, I'm gonna go check and see if Urza is up. She said and put on her nice kimono from date night when she moved to the leaf. Give me a sec and I'll be right behind you. He replied as he laid back and began thinking about the mission he was going to take today. Damari cracked open the door to Urza's room and saw she was still out like a light and came back to the master bedroom to see Naruto sitting up lost in thought. Naruto Naruto Naruto. She said raising her voice every time until he snapped out of his stupor. Huh? Sorry, what did you say? What's going on? She asked coming into bed again laying his head against her breast as she just held him and he wrapped his arms around her waist. This mission there's so many variables we're practically going in blind and I have no clue just how strong Danzo really is. Are you scared you can't beat him? She asked stroking his hair trying to get him to relax a little. It's the opposite actually. I don't know if I'm gonna have to push myself to the point of losing control to beat him. I know I can beat him, but at what cost? How much power am I going to have to show, if I lose control will I somehow come back here and hurt you too? He rambled and Tamari silenced him with a simple kiss. Relax you're overthinking things. You're gonna have Shikamaru and Niji with you right? She asked. Then Kiba. Then there's nothing to worry about. The combination of you four will be enough and I know Shikamaru will keep you in check if he needs to. She replied. I don't think anyone can to be honest with you. The amount of power I have inside of me terrifies me sometimes. Why do you say that? Because I know just how much power is still being kept sealed away, it's an absolute ridiculous amount of power being stored in me, and I'm scared if it gets out that I can't control it. You'll be fine Naru, I trust you with all my heart you understand. She asked staring into his ocean blues, and it calmed him and gave him the reassurance that he can carry out this mission. You're right. I'm overthinking something that hasn't happened yet. Thank you Mary. He said giving her a quick peck and getting up. Banzo's taken his last breath today. Make sure he knows he fucked with the wrong family you got it. More than you know. He replied as he went to the closet and got dressed. You ready? Tamari asked seeing him come out. Without a doubt. He said with laser-focused eyes. Go get him. She said bringing him down for a passionate kiss. Don't worry, you'll see me again. I know, I just like kissing you is all. She replied and Naruto just nodded and made his way to Urza's room and opened it to see her still sleeping. He walked up to her quietly and bent down to kiss her on the forehead and whispered to her, I love you Urza, I'll be home soon I promise. But that he walked downstairs, ate a quick light breakfast, quickly applied the extra security seals and walked to the front gates to see Tamari waiting for him. Be safe. She said hugging him. I will, you two stay safe alright. I don't trust Danzo to not pull something on you two while I'm out. I can handle myself you know. Daughter of one Kazikage and sister of another and the future wife of a Hokage, which would make me the daughter-in-law of another Hokage. I think I'm good. She said winking at him. I love you Tamari. He said stealing a kiss from her and began to walk out. Naru she called out and he turned back. If you need help send a toad and I'll be ready in an instant. I'll drop Urza off with Tsunade or Shizun so they can watch her okay. Naruto merely nodded and vanished in a swirl of crimson leaves. Hokage Tower. Naruto stood in line with Shikamaru on his direct right with Niji to his direct left and Kiba on the other side of Shikamaru. Thank you all for coming in early today. Now I'm sure Shikamaru has told you some of what is happening, but I'll fill you in. We have reason to believe that Danzo has been using his faction of Anbu known as Root to find abandoned children around Kanoha and kidnap them so he can traffic them to Orochimaru to conduct experiments on them since they don't have families. Your job as a team is to track them and find out a way into Danzo's lair. You are not to engage unless absolutely necessary. Tsunade said and the group nodded. Anything else we should know late Tsunade? Naruto asked. Actually yes. Should it go south and you're forced to engage, it must never be known that you took this mission. This mission won't show up on the books and you will be on your own and potentially need to flee the country for treason. Make sure you execute this mission carefully understood. Crystal. Naruto said. Well with that being said, in these scrolls are your clothing for this mission and an Anbu style mask. Tsunade said gesturing to the scrolls on her desk. 
Shikamaru, Kiba and Niji opened them up and saw that they were standard Anbu uniforms with blank masks. Naruto? You okay? Shikamaru asked seeing that he hadn't opened up his scroll. With all due respect Lady Tsunade, I have my own uniform, but I'll take the mask and the scroll. Naruto said and opened it up to see that it was in the design of a Shinigami. Why does mine have characteristics? Art of Uzumaki history. You'll see soon enough. She said and the group left to get ready in the locker rooms downstairs, except for Naruto who could instantly put on the uniform he needed. Naruto walked in to see everyone almost ready to go. Stop changing, I've got better uniforms for you guys, much more comfortable and stronger material. Take these seals, apply them to your skin. Channel chakra into your fingertips and double tap the seal to activate it. Meet me down in the basement. Make sure no one sees you, I don't just mean your face. Absolutely no one can see us. Understood. Kiba said nodding to Naruto and they watched him leave before they got undressed again, resealed the uniforms Tsunade gave them and applied the seals Naruto handed them, and were impressed with how comfortable and sturdy the uniforms were. Once they were changed they slipped out unnoticed. Basement. So why are we meeting down here? Kiba asked. Take these. Naruto said ignoring the question. Kiba's right Naruto, what are we doing down here? Niji replied. Need to make sure we're somewhere secure and away from ears or eyes. So what's with the scrolls in your hands? Shikamaru asked. Lady Tsunade included a crucial detail for this mission. If we're caught we may have to flee our homeland. If it comes to that I know where we can go, but we won't have time to go to our homes and pack everything. So take these scrolls and pack everything, and I mean everything. Your rooms should look empty. Also, quickly write a letter to your family, sensei, friends or whoever else you want to say goodbye to. If worse does come to pass I'll make sure your families and everyone gets the letters via my toads. Naruto. Kibo I know it's very extremist of me to do this, but trust me, Danzo isn't someone to take lightly, and if he gets a hint of who we are and decides to look into it, we'll already be dead. Please just write a letter to whoever. Like I said, Gamakichi will make sure they're delivered if we must flee. Do not tell them that you're being forced to flee due to a mission, just say you're being forced and that's all you can say at the moment. Meet on top of the big tree by the east gate, y'all know the one? Naruto explained and asked. Shikamaru and I sure do, I mean how could we forget? It was our favorite spot to go to when the three of us and Choji would cut class. Kiba replied with a smile. Niji, are you familiar with the tree we're talking about? The Nara Air asked. I believe so, if not I'll just use my Byakugan to search you out. Shouldn't be too hard, just have to look for a big tree by the east gate right? Sounds like we know where to go. Be there in 15 minutes, once we meet up Shikamaru will take the lead of this mission. Let's do this. As the four young men discreetly left to their homes unseen Naruto dropped by his house to give a goodbye to his love and new daughter. Hey what happened? Tamari asked concerned seeing him back so soon. Ach and said there's a chance that it goes south, and if that's the case, then the four of us must flee the country. You mean three right? Naruto shook his head, Kiba, Niji, Shikamaru and myself. Four. I told them to go pack everything from their rooms, write a letter to family, friends, sensei or whoever incas this goes south. Naruto she started. If it does, I already know where I'm taking them and don't worry, I'll find a way to get you two out as well okay? Promise me it won't go south. She set her voice close to breaking. Damari. Promise me. She ground out, trying her best not to break. I promise. He said and she embraced him like it was the last time she'd see him. I'll make sure Gamakichi keeps you updated okay? He offered and she nodded, just come home safe Naruto, we need you here I need you here. I will after all, we still need to change your last name and start our own family for real. He replied with his usual smile, and the two shared a long passionate kiss, hoping this wasn't the last time they'd taste the other. I love you Tamari. And I love you Naruto. She replied. Naruto looked at the clock on the wall and needed to get going. I need to get going, where's Urza? Still asleep, go quick. She said and Naruto bolted upstairs quietly and said his goodbyes to Urza, hoping to not wake her. With a kiss to her head he walked out and down the stairs to see Tamari waiting for him by the door. You boys better watch each other's backs you hear. Of course we will. I'll be home soon okay? I love you. She said hugging him one last time. I love you too Haim. I love you too. He said returning the hug, when they started to separate from the hug Naruto gave her a quick kiss, one that promised more to come, and with that he left. Beast Gate Tree. Naruto was the first to arrive and was waiting on a branch high up in the tree. Shikamaru was the second one there and found Naruto after climbing up. Kiba and Niji showed up at the same time and jumped to meet up. Alright we're all here, you got the letters. Naruto asked and the three nodded before pulling them out and handing them to Naruto. Summoning Jutsu. Naruto said and just like that Gamakichi was there. 
Gerudo filled in his toad partner about what was happening and asked for him to hold on to the letters and deliver them only if worse came to pass. There's no need for me to do this, but I understand why Naruto. You come back safe alright. You still owe me some damn candy. You go it buddy. Naruto replied with a smile. After that Gamakichi poofed back to Mount Mayaboku. Alright, it's on you now genius. Naruto said to Shikamaru. Thanks, so here's the plan, we're going to run a similar formation to the one we used to try and get Sasuke back. Kiba up front, followed by me, Naruto then Niji bringing up the rear. Naruto last time you only had to watch the left, this time you've got left and right. Everyone else is pretty much the same as last time. So what's the first move? Niji asked. We observe the red light district in the southeast part of the village. Thankfully Naruto picked the east gate to meet at, which means we just have to go a little south outside the walls. I know the perfect tree we can observe from. Then what are we waiting for? Kiba asked ready to get underway. Hang on a second. We're observing casually until nightfall, once the night is here we need to be on the rooftops getting a closer look. Thankfully Anbu doesn't patrol this area like they used to a few years back, so that'll be when we get up close. If we notice any shady figures hovering around kids that look homeless, signal the rest of use with your flashlight and we'll rendezvous with you. After that we quietly follow them to where the hideout is. Shikamaru explained. Shikamaru, if I may. Naruto offered. Go ahead. Niji, when we're following this person I want your Byakugan on at all times and telling us if you notice anything hollow that leads to a passageway or something got it. Naruto ordered. Understood. The Hyuga replied. I think the best move after we find the location of an entrance is to knock out the one kidnapping and bring him in for questioning, make sure they don't get a chance to bite a pill that will kill them in a matter of seconds, go straight for the KO. Take the kid and I'll lead us to the Uzumaki clan's mask storage temple, where we'll camp for the night before taking the kid to the hospital for Lady Tsuna Day to check out. What about the guy kidnapping? Kiba asked. We turn him over to Anko and Ibiki to deal with. Shikamaru replied now I'm pretty sure that covers everything, so let's move. Shikamaru said, and with that the group followed the Nara to his observation location, and they waited until nightfall. As the sun was just getting done setting and the last bit of light disappeared over the horizon, Niji perked up as he found a kid who fit the description of the typical target. What do you see Niji? Shikamaru asked. I think I've found someone who fits the description of a target for these guys. Where? He's moving south, away from us. Tattered brown pants and a black shirt with holes in it. I see him, kid looks like he doesn't even have shoes on, probably about 7 or 8 years old. Shikamaru added. Hearing the age of the kid made Naruto visibly stiffen, and Kiba noticed it, hey you okay Naruto? That boy, he's about the same age as Urza. Naruto said not taking his eyes off the kid. Hey, we're not gonna let anything happen to him you understand. Urza is home safe with Tamari, this kid is going to need help too. If we collectively don't do our jobs the kid is lost, so focus up and get ready. Shikamaru said snapping some sense back into his blonde friend. You're right, sorry. Don't apologize, just focus on helping the kid. The Nar replied. Yeah. They kept a close eye on the kid, and Shikamaru began giving out orders, Niji, move to a rooftop and keep watch. Keep us informed with the calm. System. Kiba moved to a rooftop further south than the boy is keep watch from there. Naruto, you and I will stick to the alleys and watch. I'll take the alleys on the right you take the alleys on the left. Everyone nodded in agreement and moved to their positions. Kiba and Niji were up top, while Naruto and Shikamaru were down low, sticking to the walls of the alleys. Remember to keep your chakra output to a minimum, we don't want to alert Danzo's goons that someone's patrolling the area and spook them away or worse. What could be worse than that? Kiba asked on the comms. Try getting in an unnecessary fight and being forced to flee your home. Niji replied over the comms. Fair enough. Shut up and focus. Shikamaru said as he kept his eyes on the boy. The kid was moving extremely slow and was swaying from side to side, and his eyes had heavy bag under them. Naruto knew the look all too well. I don't know how the kid is still awake or even alive. Heavy bags under his eyes, he swaying from side to side and bloodshot eyes. Kid hasn't eaten or slept in a couple days. Naruto commented. Looks like he has some cuts and bruises as well, possible struggle or fight. Shikamaru added. How's his chakra looking Niji? Kiba asked. Faint, very faint. It's like Naruto and Shikamaru described. He hasn't eaten or slept in a while, and it looks like he used up a bunch of his chakra to get out of the fight or struggle. It's amazing he's even on his feet right now. Hey, I've got two guys moving north towards the kid. Both have hoods up and dressed in all black. Eyes open everyone, this could be it. Kiba said. Niji get a look at their chakra and report. Shikamaru ordered. The kid's moving to the alley I'm in, he's hungry. Naruto said. How do you know? Shikamaru asked. 
Because I can see it written in his eyes. Naruto answered as he did his best to hold still. Those two are at least tune in level, but I can tell they're suppressing their output like us. Kiba if you can move up to me, get in the alley I'm next to, and try to focus your nose on their scent. Niji replied. I'll try but I'll need at least an alley between them and myself to move across the rooftops. Just move without chakra. Naruto responded. Kiba nodded his head and began watching while Naruto nodded to Shikamaru. Try to get to ground level Shika, I'll go higher up my building to stay hidden, try to get a glimpse of their face if you can. Naruto said. Just what I was thinking. The Nara replied smirking. Shikamaru dropped down landing quietly and held still. Keep us updated Niji. My back is to them until they come down the alley. I've got you covered don't worry. Niji answered. As the two figures kept moving towards the alley the boy turned to Naruto's alley while Kiba kept running across the rooftops. Thankfully everything in the area was starting to go full swing, so there was too much noise for anyone to hear Kiba running across the rooftops. He got in front of the assailants by Niji and dropped down the alley and waited for them to walk by. Back in Naruto's alley he saw the boy rummaging through the trash looking for food. It was something he knew too well, nights going hungry because you had to look through the trash, sleeping on the streets, or sometimes not getting to sleep because people would chase you down to beat you. He knew what the kid was going through more than anyone did. Hang tough kid, I'll make sure nothing happens to you. The blonde told himself. The mystery people walked right by Kiba and he was able to pin down their scents. He let them walk about 25 feet further down before climbing up to Niji. Got their scent. Kiba said into his mick. Any trail? Shikamaru asked. Yeah, northeast of here. I'm guessing that's where they'll take the kid. The Inuzuka answered. Okay, just to make sure we understand the plan, the kid must be taken, we follow these two until we find an underground route, take them out, camp out at the Uzumaki clan's mask temple, bring the kid to Lady Tsuna Day in the morning, and call it a mission. Remember that tonight never happened. Shikamaru said as the two finally turned into the alley the kid was in. Hold Naruto. Shikamaru whispered. The two didn't even need to move quick, they barely hit the kid in the head, and he was out cold. The two nodded to each other and began moving back to where they came from. Rooftops now. Shikamaru ordered and the two were across from each other on top of their building and watched the kidnappers swiftly move through the crowd. They're moving faster than before, they might know we're here. Naruto said to the group. Stay focused and group up. Shikamaru said as he and Naruto caught up to Niji and Kiba. From there they got into formation and began pursuing the two quietly, moving as one shadow. The two assailants made it out of the crowd and hopped on the walls and leap out into the surrounding forest. The group followed hopping on top of the wall and jumping to land in a tree. Kiba go ahead and take point, Naruto behind me, and Niji bring up the rear. They all nodded and got into formation as they began pursuing the kidnappers. How's it looking Kiba? Shikamaru asked a minute into their pursuit. Well wherever they're leading us to is the same exact route they took getting into the village. We're getting close too. Maybe another two minutes of pursuit and we'll be at the place where the trail dies. I suggest we make a move quick, dispatch them and get to the temple. Then let's move forward with an attack plan. Naruto Shadow Clones, need you use your Byakugan if you already aren't. Naruto I want you to use your Shadow Clones to where we can box them in. Have a group speed ahead and start coming back towards us, while two group are running on the left and right of them. We'll box them in, take them out and hide any evidence of a struggle. Let's do it. Naruto said before quickly making 32 clones. They split in groups of 8. One group went ahead while two groups each took a side to flank. The remaining 8 split into two groups of 4 and flanked the pursuit squad to close any gaps. Now. Shikamaru said in the comms and the clones engaged on the two assailants while they closed in from the back. To the pursuit squad surprised the two assailants the clones were converging on were dispatched in a matter of seconds and they turned on to Naruto and company. Shikamaru tried to catch them in a shadow possession, but they easily maneuvered around it and delivered a swift blow to his solar plexus, followed by a knee to his nose breaking it, then grabbing the back of his head and slamming him into the dirt. Niji was up next and just like Shikamaru he was dispatched easily. An uppercut followed by a roundhouse kick to the liver and sending him into a tree was enough to keep him down and sucking in air. Shit. Naruto said as he looked around to see it was now just him and Kiba that needed to take these two out and they proved that they were trained very well under Danzo. Any ideas? Kiba asked. No. Shikamaru and Niji were supposed to act as restraint while we kick their ass, but that plan is out the window now. Damn. You still have their scent ya? Of course, why? Kiba asked. Pause I'm about to leave you with them momentarily. I want to see how they respond. Naruto replied before Kiba nodded looking at the two elite shinobi. But that Naruto leapt into the trees, leaving Kiba alone with the two captors. So how's your night been? Kiba asked sarcastically and got no response. 
Geez, like talking to a robot or something. He thought to himself before charging in towards the one with the kid. This caused a second rutin into Shunshin in front of Kiva, with his sword slashing across to Kiva's throat in reverse grip. Before he could make contact however the ground started to shake and out of the ground came Naruto with a Rasengan in hand, slamming it into the chest of the aggressive Rutenin, sending him back towards his partner who just sidestepped his body and let him fall to earth out cold. Kiba get the kid. Naruto yelled and Kiba charged it again. Just like last time the ground started to shake and another Naruto broke through with a Rasengan charged up, but seeing the same trick wouldn't work twice on a root agent, so he easily stepped back before coming down with an axe kick to the top. Of the clone's head forcing the Rasengan to impact the ground and cause an explosion kicking up dust and dirt. As the root agent backed up to gain some distance he got kicked in the back and it was hard enough to have an audible cracking sound and he dropped the kid. Without needing to be told Kiba dove in and caught the kid before he could hit the ground and made a beeline for Niji and Shikamaru. Meanwhile the real Naruto dropped down from the trees with a big bull Rasengan in hand and slammed it down at the point where the neck and upper back meet on the Rutenin, sending him into the ground. Naruto dispersed the remaining clones in the area and got to work tying up the root agents and breaking each finger. No jutsus for you assets. He hummed as he snapped them one by one after tying them up and barbed ninja wire. He also punched each side of their jaw to check for a pill to kill them, but saw that there wasn't any after knocking out all their molars. Anko would be so proud of me right now. Naruto joked to himself before dragging the bodies to where Kiba was. Kiba just got Niji and Shikamaru situated on a tree next to each other as Naruto came up with the now bound ninjas in tow. So what do we do about them? Kiba motioned towards their teammates. You too good? Naruto asked. I've seen better days. Shikamaru replied. Looks like you've smelled better days too. Naruto joked. Shut up. The Nara replied. What about you Niji? Kiba asked. Feels like I relearned how to breathe finally. Good. Then we need to figure out how to really keep these two out for a while. The blonde said while looking down at his captives. I might be able to help with that. A voice from a near tree came that made Naruto's blood run cold. All eyes darted to the origin point to see a man with red eyes and black hair drop down to ground level. Itachi? Naruto asked. That's Itachi Ichihaniji exclaimed. Yeah, what do you want Itachi? Naruto asked with a kunai in hand. Relax Naruto, I'm just here to talk. I overheard your little dilemma about needing to keep these two out for a while, and I have an offer for you. What's that? Naruto asked. We don't deal with missing ninjas, so forget about it. Shikamaru snapped as he slowly stood up. I'll place those two under a powerful Jinjutsu so you can get them to Lady Hokage, who can then turn them over to the INT department to have their fun. Itachi said ignoring the Nara air and looking directly into Naruto's now purple eyes. And in return? The Yuzumaki asked. You come with me. We need to have a talk. Don't Naruto. We can't trust him. Shikamaru said holding his chest. Why do this for us Itachi? Naruto asked. Anzo needs to be kept in check and eventually killed. He killed my best friend Shisui among other things. Besides we need to talk and doing this for you once will have you in my debt. Fine. Naruto conceded stepping away from the bodies. You guys go to the meeting point and wait for me. If I don't come back we'll cross that bridge when we get there. He said smiling. Itachi quickly put the two roots in a Jinjutsu and stepped back waiting for Naruto. Alright, time for you to hold up your end. Itachi said waiting. Very well, let's go. Naruto said disappearing with Itachi. Very appeared somewhere Naruto didn't recognize, but it was clear they were in an open field somewhere. So what do you want to talk about? My mission for Jiraiya Sensei. Come again? Naruto asked stunned. When I got done taking out my clan and fled the country I ran into Jiraiya. I became a part of his spy network and relayed to him information about the Akatsuki to him whenever I can. Since you're his apprentice and will no doubt succeed him I felt that you needed to be included in this. The Akatsuki has already made their move by securing the One Tails. The Ichiha said. Yeah, thanks for killing my friend and forcing one of Suna's elders to take his place. I had to Naruto, I'm sorry though. The way they want to go about it is that they're gonna go in order from the One Tail up to you, the Nine Tails. In this scroll is a list of the members and all the abilities I know of at the moment. All I want you to know is that you can't trust Danzo no matter what. He had a hand in the Ichiha genocide and is obsessed with our eyes. Be careful of him because he's much more dangerous than he appears. He'll do whatever it takes to become the Hokage, so watch out for Lady Tsunade. He won't hesitate to oust her if he thinks he can make a grab for the position and turn Konoha into a militaristic dictatorship unlike anything you could understand. Worst part is he'll treat you like a weapon and never let you leave the village. If you have kids he'll force them to become emotionless soldiers like the two you took down. And he won't stop there, he'll make every leaf shinobi like them. 
Why are you telling me all of this, and how can I even trust you on any of this shit? Naruto asked. Because at the end of the day I'm still a loyal leaf shinobi. I may be an Ichiha, but I always saw myself as a Konoha native first, Ichiha second. I'm entrusting you to take care of things back home while I do what I can away from home. Naruto didn't reply taking time to let everything sink in. Alright I'll trust you for now. I don't exactly have a great relationship with Danzo already, so it's a good thing to know that my gut was right. Thank you for the help Itachi. Naruto said extending his hand. Itachi took it, shook it firmly, and in the next second they were back in the forest. Better get to your friends. Itachi said before leaving in a burst of crows. Naruto nodded, putting away the scroll and taking off to the meeting point. Thanks for watching guys, I hope did you enjoy this video, if you do please leave a like, share and subscribe, also don't forget to drink water, take care bye.